I want to show you three useful financial functions in an Excel. Those would be the future value function, the present value function, and the NPV or net present value function. So if you want to calculate the future value of a cash flow in time period T, you take the present value, the value today, and you multiply it by one plus the interest rate raised to the teeth power. Alternatively, there's a function in Excel that will do this for us. So let's see if we can do this, and we'll do this um, both ways to show you that it's easier to use this function. So I'm going to start with a present value of 100, an interest rate of 10%, and I have different values for T. So I'm going to calculate the future value in year one, in year two, year three, and year four. So I could calculate this future value function, 1 plus r to the teeth power, separately, and then multiply it by the present value. So I'm going to do that right here. So equals 1 plus, and here I've put the interest rate here, and I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the 2 to lock the value. That means that when I copy this down, it will stay right here. I have to close the parenthesis, and then I want to raise it to the teeth power. I'm not going to lock this value because when I copy it down, I want this to go to, you know, one plus uh, the interest rate to the second power, one plus the interest rate to the third power, etc. So if you look, this makes sense, right? One point one, one plus point one is going to be one point zero zero. I can. I could do this four times, but I can copy it down. So if you've never done any copying in Excel, you can see when my cursor is over this cell, it's sort of this three-dimensional plus sign, but you can't see it very well, but there's a little box here at the bottom. And if I move over that, see how it becomes a dark two-dimensional plus sign? If I hold the left mouse key and I just drag this down, it'll copy that formula. And you can verify it for yourself that 1.10 squared is 1.21, right? In fact, you might even be able to see that. 11 squared is 121, so that would be that value. And this would be 1.1 to the third power, etc. Now I can just multiply each one of these times 100 to get the future value. So here I'm going to say I have the present value. I want to lock that cell. Another way to do it is to hit the F4 key, and that will lock it for you. And I'm going to say times this future value factor. And we see we get $110, right? In fact, the math is quite easy. We can just see, we just move the decimal place here. And you can see we get all these values, 121, 13310, et cetera. Now you can do that that way, and, and this is better than doing each one by hand, for example, as, as I sometimes see students do, typing in 100 times 1.10, and then they have another equation, 100 times 1.10 squared, and they do it all by hand. Okay, But Excel has a function that calculates future value. So you have to type an equal sign before the function, and if you want to see what functions Excel has, you see there's this big summation sign, this adds things up, but there's also a drop-down menu, and you can look at more functions, and you can choose, for example, financial functions, and you can see lots of different financial functions. So here I'm looking at the FV function, and it will tell you what you put in. And if you need more help, you can type, you can click this, and it'll give you more information about what this does. All right, so I'm going to type in, so you want to put in the rate, the number of periods, the rate is here, the number of periods is here, PMT is what's known as an annuity. It's a stream of equal payments made at equal intervals. So you might have a bond that pays interest every year. Let's say the bond lasts for 10 years. Every year for 10 years. So you would put that in here. PV is this present value um, factor. Actually, you probably wouldn't do a bond here because you'd be finding the future value. Usually we're finding the present value of a bond. But there might be something where you're, for example, saving for retirement. That's a better example. 
you're saving your money, you have a certain amount of money in the bank, and then you're adding money every year. So we want to find the total future value. So you started with 10000 in your account, and for the next 10 years, you're going to put another $1,000 in every year. That would go here. PV is in these brackets because the it's going to give you the opposite sign as future value. So if you want it to be, if you want this value to come out positive, the future value to come out as positive, you have to put this in as a negative value, otherwise it'll come in negative. And type has to do with this PMT. If the first payment is made one year from today, and that's usually how we do these calculations, it's called an ordinary annuity. And you would just leave it blank or put a zero in. If the first payment begins today, then we call that an annuity due, and you would type a 1 in here. We don't have a PMT, so we can just ignore um, this value here. So let's see if we get the same values here with a little easier calculation. So I'm going to say equals FV. I'm going to put in the rate, and I'm going to hit the F4 key so it locks that. It actually likes, locks the column as well as the row. We don't need to lock the column because we're not copying across, but that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. The number of periods is here. I don't want to lock that, so I'll just leave that blank. I'm going to put a comma in. Now it wants me to put in PMT. See how it darkens these? Again, it's a little hard to see on the screen, but when you're doing it on a computer, on a spreadsheet, you'll be able to see it. I don't have a PMT, so I can put a zero in, or I could just put another comma in. There would be nothing there. And I'm going to put in the present value, which is here. I'm going to leave it as a positive number, and you'll see you'll get negative numbers here. And I'm going to lock it again by hitting the F4 key. And I'm just going to close up my parentheses. You see I get exactly the same value, it's just negative. And again, I can copy this down, and you can see I get all the same values. And it's a little bit easier. I don't have to, you know, calculate the future value factor and then multiply it together. I just do it all at once. Likewise, there's a present value factor. So present value finds the value today for a cash flow we receive sometime in the future. And the formula for that is the future value in time period t divided by 1 plus the interest rate raised to the teeth power gives us the present value. So again, we could calculate the present value factors, multiply by the cash flow, and then um, and then get the present value that way, or we can use the function. So again, we'll do it both ways. So here's the present value factor. Equals 1 divided by 1 plus, I've got this interest rate of 10% here, and again, I'll lock it by hitting the F4 key, raised to the, in this case, the first power. And you can verify that for yourself, um, that it's 0 0.90909, well, let me just reduce the decimal place here, make it a little bit easier. All right, I can then copy this formula down again, as we've done before. Now, what did I do wrong? I did something wrong. I didn't raise it to a power. Okay, so let me let me let me fix that. All right, some ways this is good. So equals one plus because I didn't raise it to a power. I thought it was raised to one every time. So I'm going to I have the rate here f four. Okay, this we call it a hat. Sometimes they call it a carrot. It's the shift six key raised to this power. I should still get 0 0.90909 for this one. Whoops, I forgot to divide by 1. So another mistake there. So let me just fix that. 1 divided by that. Okay, there we go. And then let me just copy this down. And hopefully we get different values. There we go. All right, and the farther into the future you're, you're going, the smaller this number is going to be, right? This factor is going to make the future value uh, or the present value smaller the longer you have to wait for your money. And again, let's find the present value of this. We're going to take the cash flow and then multiply it by 
the present value factor and you just use the asterisk key for that and you get these values and I'll just copy them down right so remember you're you're um, multiplying by this so four hundred dollars you know four years into the future is quite a bit less than it is today the hundred one year in the future a little bit less but the longer you have to wait the less that money is worth now we can also use this PV function just like the future value function it'll tell you what you need to type in you type the rate the number of periods that PMT again future value and type and I explained type and I explained why this was in brackets that you'll get the opposite sign here so let's see what we get here let's use the present value function PV okay the rate here is 10 percent we want to lock the cell and and we put a comma in number of periods is right here we don't want to lock that cell we have no payment so again put in zero and the future value is right here we don't want to lock that because we want that to change and let's see what we get here okay same thing okay just negative and if we've done this correctly we get all the same values except they're negative so now let me show you the third function this is what's referred to as the net present value function and actually the net present value function doesn't actually calculate net present value net present value is used in capital budgeting so we find the present value of the cash flows from a project and we subtract out the cost unfortunately whenever whoever coded this for the first time didn't understand what NPV was and they did not do it correctly so what it does is it calculates the present value of the cash flows it actually calculates this it doesn't subtract out the cost so we can use this to calculate the present value of a bunch of cash flows so suppose we wanted to calculate the present value of all these cash flows and we actually did them over here and we wanted to add them up that's something we commonly do in finance because we have a project that has cash flows in over several years we find the present value of each of those cash flows and we add them up to see what they're worth today and that's what we would for example pay for um, a bond or something that we were where we were receiving this amount of money over several years so again I can calculate that PV factor and I'll do that just like I did before so this is going to be hopefully I'll do this correctly this time 1 plus the interest rate okay lock that raised to the years power all right so that looks kind of familiar okay so this is exactly the same example that I did before and then I can find the present value of all of these so I can say equals um, this times this all right and I can just bring all of those down and if I wanted to know the present value of all of these I could just sum these up all right and see up here there's this summation sign before I showed you there's a drop down menu but you can also just if you just hit this thing it'll just do summation and it happens to be highlighting the correct cell so I'm just gonna hit enter 75480 well we could actually use this NPV function to do this in one fell swoop we just put in equals NPV open parenthesis the rate and then the values so let's see if we get the same value NPV interest rate and then I'm just going to highlight these values close the parenthesis and I get exactly the same thing here as here so you can see that and yeah, it saves you a step right you don't have to calculate each one separately and then add it up it does that for you so this is also a very useful function so you know much easier than doing it step by step